Hi, this is Gary with MagMOS Now. On today's episode, let's look at ways to move your iTunes library. So this is a very common request. Say you have a very large iTunes library and you want to move it, say, to an external drive to save space on your internal drive. Well, you can do this one of many different ways. Let's look at three of them. So first let's take a look at your music library. Now by default it's stored in your user folder, MacMost in this case, under music and then you'll see a folder called iTunes. This is your iTunes library. Now inside of it you've got a whole bunch of different folders. iTunes media is where all the good stuff is. All your mp3 files, videos, everything. If I look in there I can see that it's been organized into downloads, music, podcasts, etc. I look under music and I can find all my music organized by artist. Now if I go back here I can see there's also a folder for album artwork and I can see there's several supporting files including your iTunes library database and a few others. So the very easiest way to move your iTunes library is to grab this folder, this iTunes folder under your music folder and copy it to your external hard drive. Then once you've copied it, take this copy and throw it in the trash. Now once you've done that you basically moved it over to the new external drive. That's step one. So step two is to launch iTunes but with the option key held down. When you do that you will get this dialog. Choose your iTunes library and you want to select choose library and then it will open up a file dialog and you can go in and find that iTunes folder. Here it's showing me the one I have on my internal drive but you would go and browse to your external drive, select that iTunes library click choose and now it's looking at that new copy of your iTunes library. You don't have to do this again. It will automatically look in the same location next time you run iTunes. So the advantages of this method is it's fast, it's easy and it takes everything into account even your podcast and podcast descriptions. But it's not the only way to go. So let's take a look inside of iTunes. In iTunes preferences under advanced you'll see two checkboxes here. One is to keep the iTunes media folder organized which means it will rename folders and files uh, depending upon what the music is. Keep everything really well organized inside of the iTunes library. And the other one is this one. Copy files to the iTunes media folder when adding to library. This means when you drag and drop something into iTunes it actually makes a copy of it and it's that copy inside the iTunes folder that it's actually referring to in iTunes. However, you can turn this off. Now if you turn this off what will happen is you can have your music stored in another folder and yet referenced in the iTunes library. So using this you could actually put some music files on your external drive. Have a, say a huge collection of music files there. Drag and drop them into iTunes and those files will remain on the external drive even though your iTunes library shows them just like they were on your internal drive. This way you can split your media. You can have say a large collection of albums on an external drive and yet your iTunes folder on your internal drive and say with all your podcasts and maybe some other music and videos. The advantage to this method is you can split things up. So if you have a very large library of music you can basically put a lot of it on an external drive. This is useful for backing up purposes. So say you have a thousand albums and you don't want to back those up to Time Machine. You already have them archived somewhere else. You can put them on an external drive, have iTunes access all of these and then you can not have to worry about them getting backed up again to Time Machine and save that space on your internal drive. It also is great if you've got a MacBook because you can have say a large music collection on an external drive for when the MacBook is sitting at your desk and plugged into it and you can have just the basics actually on your MacBook uh, when you're traveling. And of course you won't be able to play those songs. It will show you an error when you try to access music that's on the external drive if it's not plugged in. But as long as you remember that it won't be an issue. A third method is to simply recreate your entire iTunes library from scratch. This is so easy to do. I can't believe people don't do this more often. It's a great way to get rid of errors especially if you've got uh, even files that you've deleted from your hard drive but iTunes still thinks they're there. You simply create a new iTunes library by holding down the option key and starting iTunes and then just drag and drop all of your media, all the music, all the videos, everything. You can just put it in one big folder and drag it onto iTunes and it will copy it into the new library and organize it for you. Now then you're going to have to resubscribe to your podcasts and also you're going to have to get album artwork and things like that again and if you have any customizations in there like you've specifically changed the information in some songs then you may lose it. 
But if you don't, this is a great way to move your iTunes library around and get a fresh start at the same time. So one word of caution, make sure if you move your iTunes library to an external drive that that's also getting backed up via Time Machine, just like your internal drive. I would just check a day or two later to make sure that the stuff is there in Time Machine. It should be there automatically. I hope you found this useful. Till next time, this is Gary Rosenzweig with MacMost Now.